If you like Ben 10, hit like. Rada rada, my brothers and sisters by God. This is your brother in Christ, Abstraction Itzel, here with another video. In this video, I'll be reviewing the new Ben 10 Season 5 special, Ben Gen 10. So let's just get right into this review. Right off the bat, I'm just gonna say, this special was fantastic. I really enjoyed it more than I thought I would. It was amazing, but let's backtrack a little. The movie starts out with Ben burning down trees as heat blast. Evil trees. Hex's evil trees. Gwen and Max help Ben out, as usual, and Ben easily defeats Hex by burning the magic flute. Not a bad start to the special. This special actually acknowledges the summer is ending, and Ben doesn't want it to end while Gwen looks forward to its end. When we get introduced to Rex and Bobo, it's not really hard to follow what's going on, which is nice. They come across as two homeless dudes trying to get food and survive, which is basically what they are. When they steal and eat Ben's talking s'more, he goes after them hard, no idea why, since he could have easily just made another one that hopefully doesn't talk. But yeah, Rex and Bobo thought Cannon Bolt was an Evo, which means they've never seen aliens before, and Rex learns how to make the big fat sword to fight Ben. But the real craziness happens when he tries to cure Ben and ends up corrupting the entire world, turning people into aliens. This was actually a genius idea and I applaud whoever came up with it because it actually makes sense if you understand what evos are and if you understand how the Omnitrix transforms the user. The Nana is mixed with alien DNA and turned everyone into aliens instead of evos. Then this crazy picnic family tried to attack Ben thinking that would get him to turn them back into humans, but Agent 6 saved him. Seriously, how mad do you have to be to attack a 10 year old child? These people shouldn't be allowed to have kids. Anyway, Rex and Bobo kept running because they knew that Providence was looking for them, and Six realizes the Omnitrix may be responsible for the humans turning into aliens, so he tries to capture Ben. So, he and Providence attempt to capture Ben, Rex, and Bobo. The three team up against Six and Providence, and eventually the aliens too, because Hex takes control of the aliens. While I was watching this, I was wondering why Hex was able to control the humans who were corrupted by alien DNA, but not regular humans. But now that I think about it, it's probably because evils are corrupted by nanites and usually lose their sanity, so it probably works the same way when it's alien nanite DNA corrupting them. The humans being corrupted by alien nanite DNA likely made them more vulnerable to losing their sanity, allowing Hex to control them. So anyway, Hex eventually has control of an alien army at his own hands, and since the corruption spread around the world corrupting most humans, we can assume Hex had at least a few billion aliens at his command. That's a big alien army. So yeah, once Ben, Rex, and Bobo retreat to the rust bucket, we hear more about the origins of Rex and Bobo. We learn that this version of Rex, along with Bobo, have been running from Six and the rest of Providence after the Nanite events occurred which seems to have happened very recently based on the fact that Rex is only now learning how to build things with his nanites. Six and the rest of Providence want to use Rex for his powers, and it seems like Six is the leader or commander of Providence in the reboots. Rex doesn't really remember what happened to his parents, but based on what I know about the nanite event from the original Generator Rex, I think it's clear that they were responsible for the nanite event and either died or turned into evos when it happened. Rex had the opportunity to undo what he did in the rest bucket, but wasn't confident enough to do so. I think he was just scared he'd mess things up even more, and I don't blame him. He thought he'd be doing something good by trying to cure cannon bolts, but instead made a huge mess, so I can understand why he'd think trying to clean up a huge mess would make an even bigger mess. Later, we learn that the Nanai alien people are still sane enough to think and speak, but aren't sane enough to think for themselves or control themselves, as Gwen and Max can talk, but only under Hex's control. At first, Rex and Bobo decide to run, but Hex is inspired by Ben's ability to fight, even without powers, and decides to help him out. Agent Six joins the fight, and they all go into hiding when they can't fight off the alien army, only to be found by Hex. When they all take on Hex, Rex figures out how to make the smack hands and the punk busters, which he uses to get rid of Hex temporarily. Eventually, the alien army breaks into the hiding place, and the four heroes are forced to take on the entire alien army along with Hex. Agent Six is willing to have Providence launch a missile to destroy anything and everything in Washington DC, which would end at least a million lives, including those of Six, Rex, and Bobo. While Rex, Bobo, and Ben take on the aliens, Six does a nice job fighting Hex. 
At one point, he actually slices Hex, but it doesn't really do anything since Hex is immortal. But still, that's pretty impressive. Under pressure, Rex finally decides to attempt to undo what he did to turn everyone into aliens, and it actually works. He reversed the DNA flow and cured everyone, so Hex lost control over everyone, then got KO'd by Ben and Rex. Providence had already sent the missile to destroy Washington, D.C., but Rex, who had just cured the whole world, had enough confidence to kick the missile upward, causing it to blow up in the sky and not destroy Washington, D.C. In the end, Hex was apprehended by Providence, and Six gave Rex and Bobo a chance to run away since he constantly witnessed Rex gaining more control of his powers. However, he warned Rex that he'd be there if Rex ever lost control of his powers. Rex, Bobo, and Ben said their goodbyes, and Ben admitted to Max and Gwen that he worries about heroing alone, and the special ended with Max and Gwen saying Ben won't have to hero alone, and that they'll always be family. I did enjoy the special a lot, even more than I thought I would. But I think a major reason for this is because I watched the original Generator Rex. Even though some things are different in this version, I feel like this special is harder to understand if you've never watched the original Generator Rex. For example, this special never explains what EVOs are. I mean, Bobo does say what EVO stands for, and Rex says that nanites can turn people into monsters, but we never actually see an EVO to know what they could look like. I just feel like I wouldn't understand some of the things that were going on in this special if I didn't watch the original Generator X. However, the way Providence is portrayed almost combines the way the plumbers were in the original Ben 10 series and the way Providence was in the original Generator X. Providence in the reboot seems to be a secret organization that deals with EVOs and must be doing a really good job of it if nobody sees or hears about EVOs. But once again, I am concluding this all based on both what I know about this special and what I know about the original Generator X. If I never watched the original Generator X, I'd really be confused by this. Rex's origin story was really similar to that of his original counterpart, except this time Agent Six is the one trying to contain him instead of White Knight, and Six wants to use Rex against his will instead of allowing Rex to work for Providence willingly. Other than the issues with Providence and the Evos, the rest of the story is pretty easy to follow for anyone, and it is really nice to see Rex build up his confidence to save the world, then save DC. There weren't really any plot holes in the special, just some things that wouldn't make sense if you didn't watch the original Generator X. Also, in this crossover, Ben and Rex exist in the same universe, instead of two different universes, so we could see Rex and Bobo again if this Benson reboot gets a sequel. I like how Rex and Bobo kept their original voice actors, but I wish Agent 6 did too. I didn't really like Vic Chow voicing him. It was actually kind of off for me, but I did get by it. As a fan of both Ben 10 and Generator X, I think my favorite scenes were the beginning and ending scenes. And like I said, Nanites corrupting the alien DNA and turning humans into aliens instead of EVOs was a genius idea. I just wish this special explained Providence, EVOs, and Nanites better for the people who haven't watched Generator X. And it is for this reason that I give Ben Gen 10 a 9.5 out of 10. The plots, story, characterization, action scenes, and animation were phenomenal, and the only thing that would make it better is making it more watchable for the people who haven't watched the original Generator X by explaining things better. I genuinely enjoyed this special though. I just wish Cartoon Network didn't air all of season 5 at once. I think that the specials should have been more spread out. But anyway, that's my review for Ben Gen 10. I highly recommend it, and I encourage you to check it out if you haven't seen it already. And if you have time, I would even encourage you to watch the original Generator X too. It's a good show. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, and share. And don't forget that Jesus is the light. God bless.